Uh, we know it's really busy with so many events and uh, going around and people to meet. Um, I'm Diana Campbell. I am the chief curator of the Dhaka Art Summit and the artistic director of the Samdani Art Foundation. And I'm so privileged to be a part of this project because of the vision of my friend and colleague, Nadia Samdani, who is the co-founder of the Dhaka Art Summit, the director of the Dhaka Art Summit, and the co-founder of the Samdani Art Foundation. So maybe before we start, um, the purpose of this talk is actually to preview DACA Art Summit 2023, uh, because we'd love for you all to be with us. But maybe before we start that, who in this room has been to Bangladesh before? So actually almost everyone in this room, which is pretty exciting. So if I would have asked this question 10 years ago when this project started, I think it would have been a very different uh, answer. And so we hope to see all of you with us um, in February. But to start, I thought it would be great to kind of tell the journey of this project uh, through Nadia's uh, voice, because we're not a biennale, we're not an art fair. I can tell you a lot of things that we're not, um, which makes a kind of uh, unique thing of what we are. So Nadia, maybe can you tell us a bit about why you started the summit in 2012 and what that kind of looked like with your three months of self-organization? Um, thank you. Um, what a privilege to be here. And thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, I want to thank everybody that has supported us from the beginning of our journey till now and are supporting continuously. So um, thank you again. And so our journey started in 2011 when Rajiv and I thought of doing something uh, to support the arts in Dhaka, in Bangladesh. And we really didn't have a clue what to do. Um, so, but we had lots of friends, amazing friends from around the world who were advisors and who have supported us and gave us very, very good advice. And we followed those. And we thought that, OK, let's create something. Uh, everybody had a curiosity about Bangladesh, that what is the art scene like? What is go I mean, how can we meet artists? How can we see artists? Is there? contemporary art museums, are there galleries? So the answer for us was always quite difficult that, okay, how do we, how do we actually start this? So um, initially we thought that, okay, since there's not much going on, maybe we could do something and invite the international art world to Bangladesh to see our art. And so that's how the idea of our platform started that you know, we'd create like amazing curated shows with Bangladeshi artists and of course South Asian artists. And, and we have over the years, it's just grown and we have, we finish five editions, which is every, every two years there's an edition. So just um, walking back to uh, in 2012, when we did our first edition, like I said, we really didn't know what, what to, wh how to go about this. So we actually planned the Dhaka Art Summit in three months and just focusing on Bangladeshi artists. And luckily, one of our commissions of Dhaka Art Summit by Tayyab Begum Lipi was um, acquired by the Guggenheim Museum. So that's where kind of the journey started. And then um, in 2014, which was uh, our second edition, we were much more organized. We had um, curators, lots of artists, and interests. Um, so this is one of our success stories of Rana Begum. Rana Begum is a Bangladeshi diaspora artist living in the UK and has been doing amazing works with metal and um, different kinds of sculpture works. And when we invited her to do something in Bangladesh, uh, also her childhood was in Bangladesh. She's from Silet, a part where Rajiv and I are from. And uh, so, so she wanted to create something with baskets. And this is actually about her new, um, you'll see a lot of her works, how it's developed from this project and the way this was installed in our space in uh, the Shilpakala Academy, which was the cultural um, art center in Bangladesh, who we partner with. Um, so the beautiful light that seeps in. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, go ahead. And I think what's really interesting about this is that um, Bangladesh has really um, very difficult infrastructure when it comes to showing art that might be made somewhere else. So um, really high import taxes, um, 
also if so she wanted to make works in metal, which is what she normally does, metal doesn't really exist in Bangladesh, um, but this was a, a challenge for her. She had never made a work like this before, and suddenly this kind of made sense that the work was not really about the material, it was about light. And she had been working in the UK for years. She went to art school in the UK, but it was actually um, a curator from the UK seeing her in Dhaka that gave her a show in the UK that allowed her career to kind of develop to the point that it is now. So if you see the cloud works and things like that, it all kind of stemmed from this change in the work with the basket piece. Um, so um, then again in 2016, so this image on the the left-hand side, you see Sandeep Mukherjee. This was a commission. So this, uh, this is kind of the, to show you the space of how we recreate the space for every edition. And this is, was a commission done for us where you, it was where people could walk on the art. And um, the next edition, sorry, and one of our main folk uh, dark art summit, the beauty is about the people, the visitors, all the different types of people that come. And what we are, we don't sell tickets. We don't, you don't need registrations. Um, it's not by invitation only. It's free and it's open for all. And we have successfully managed that and it's become a huge success. Like for example, in the last edition in 2020, in February, we in nine days we had almost half a million visitors, um, which is huge. And I think it's one of the highest visited art events in the world. And um, of course, local, local visitors and visitors from all around the world have uh, visited. And, and I think also an important thing to share is collaboration is such an important part of how this happens. So for example, here you're seeing a beautiful work by Zarina. Um, Bangladesh, for example, doesn't have art insurance. So how to show something like this? So it's actually lenders, galleries, collectors that kind of come together and lend their infrastructure because they think uh, the, they and the artists think it's important for their work to be seen in this context. And also over time, training up, you know, it wasn't like there were art handlers in Bangladesh. Uh, so also there's an element of training people across editions and now it's incredible to see them employed by other initiatives in the region. Um, we also work with guest curators, so Devika Singh, who many of you in Paris might know, um, this predated her, um, her time at Tate, so it was wonderful for this research in Bangladesh to kind of continue with her as she moved into different roles. Um, uh, yeah, so again, I, uh, the, the space, again, this is uh, for the next edition where we install, we also give out awards. We give out some Dani Art Awards and for this uh, in 2018 edition we ha we gave out um, an architecture award, Young Architects and usually for an architect it takes years and years of education and working for them to kind of have a platform of their own so we thought that we'd reach out to third year fourth year architecture students and do an open call for an award and then of course we had a, um, a jury panel and went through the whole process so this uh, Bangladeshi artist won the award to create this pavilion which was an educational pavilion which was right at the center of the um, main space of the building where continuously there was workshops going on, there was talks going on. Um, so it's also giving uh, visibility to young artists, young architects. Um, and then in the next edition, um, this was in 2018. This project was by Ritu Sattar and we, we really enjoy our performance section. So we really, performance is a big part of Talk Art Summit. And this was uh, quite a beautiful orchestrated performance that has later on traveled to a few places. And also, I guess when we speak about collaboration, um, this performance, I believe, had 32 musicians who are playing droning sounds on a harmonium, which is an instrument that's found across South Asia, but is becoming less and less present uh, due to kind of rising fundamentalism. And so this was kind of a protest against that. Um, and we in Bangladesh were able to realize the performance. We didn't have the financial means to realize the film. So the Liverpool Biennial uh, partnered with us. They produced the film. 
we produced the performance. And um, sadly, this got delayed uh, due to the pandemic, but the film and the performance will go to MoMA. And um, it was wonderful to have, like this artist has not sold an artwork before, she doesn't have a gallery. It really was about creating that context where the works can speak for themselves in a very powerful way. This has also been performed in Dubai um, as well, which was, I think, very meaningful for the migrant community there. And then this is um, a project we did um, in our last edition by Yasmin Jahan Nupur. It was, um, it was shown in a few places, and it's a beautiful uh, performance piece with this installation, which is now showing at the Tate Museum. And she'll be performing. So from here, if any of you are going to London, please drop in to see Yasmin uh, perform. So this is actually a beautiful picture of Nili Mashek and um, Yasmin Jahanupur doing the performance. And then there's the image of Nili Mashek where she created these beautiful commission for us at the Dark Art Summit. So we also uh, commission a lot of works that are, s yeah. yeah. So basically you're not going to Bangladesh to see things that you would have seen somewhere else. We work really closely with the artists across years, sometimes like more than two years. And we work with artists, like the same artists over time sometimes. Uh, so it's a long and sustained dialogue. And we're also very proud that um, Nupur's piece was acquired by the Tate Modern. It's the first work by a Bangladeshi artist to be on display there. So slowly and surely, um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, the summit is really about a platform where ideas can reach an audience, uh, but also these ideas can really reach a local public that's growing. So they've had 10 years of, of um, encounters with these works and with these artists and ideas. And we can't say which museum yet, but another museum has acquired the Nilima work. Uh, I should also say that we're non-commercial, so Technically nothing is, we're not financially involved in this part of the project, but we're very proud when these works uh, find, so it's not just about the nine days, they can live on elsewhere. Um, this, this was a project, um, for the last edition, we worked with um, exhibition designers, and uh, we, th so the uh, Swiss exhibition designing team, so some of our team, it was a, it was a beautiful process, um, a group of our team members traveled to Switzerland and the Swiss team came to Bangladesh to train and do workshops and um, it was a place where we wanted to really reduce carbon footprint and how to make the space uh, where we don't build walls and close off the space but keep the space as it is and kind of have the airflow so there was um, a lot of um, local materials used, so these are jutes, and this was also one of the first times we used uh, cinema banner painters, and it also kind of talks about um, shared solidarity movements yeah. across Africa and Asia. So we worked with Savvy Contemporary, and um, the researchers made a giant timeline of these protest movements. Um, what's interesting, if you went to Documenta and saw the beautiful Brito mural, many of these painters traveled there, so it was wonderful to see these lines moving. But what you're seeing here, and you'll see more as the presentation continues, this is the same space here where you see all of these walls being built. Um, and th there's a point to this later, but here we tried to have any material that we were using to go back. So basically this is a can, th this became walls for other exhibitions. It's a canvas that can move. The red things are rented scaffolding that are painted that just went back to the construction site. So. Um, Bangladesh is one of the most climate impact places in the world and exhibitions are extremely unecological. Unec um, so we are trying to find ways that we can deal with this paradox. Um, so we're gonna transition a bit into the next uh, part of the presentation, but um, so Nadia you know, and Rajib, they're both from Bangladesh and they would tell me that they were so proud of where they came from, but when they traveled internationally, it had almost no visibility other than things in the headlines like floods or collapsing uh, factory buildings. And I could really connect with that because my mother comes from Guam, which is a tiny island in the Pacific that most people don't even know where that is. Um, Bangladesh has a language movement where basically their colonizers didn't allow them to speak their language. We have the same thing. And what was really amazing in the last summit, these are works by a young Chamorro diaspora artist named Gisela McDaniel. So you might be familiar with her in the market now, but at the time she was 23 in Detroit 
And um, we were able to make these connections across shared struggles in Guam and Bangladesh. Also when it comes to rising ocean levels, language. There's so, so we started to see these like shared struggles and artists like this artist from Guam got her international launch uh, in Bangladesh, which I think is an interesting. Um, and the work is basically about um, yeah, uh, sexual um, violence against women in the Pacific, which we can see in figures like Gauguin and others. Um, so transitioning to the next summit, um, we are very excited about it, and um, it's the first one with the Bangladeshi name. So the way that I'm Diana, or Nadia is Nadia, there's a name uh, in Bangla which is Bonna. And maybe Nadia, do you want to say what Bonna means? Yeah, so Bonna in Bengali, um, it's a beautiful Bangladeshi name which a lot of um, female girls have. But when you translate the name, it means flood. Uh, and for a Bangladeshi or someone from that part of the world, Bonna is something we welcome. We welcome the rain, we celebrate, it's good for our harvesting, but when you translate it directly in flood, so uh, no one in the European world would think that, okay, I'll name my child flood because it's not a positive thing, it's a very negative thing. So, um, so it's kind of also this year's theme, like, you know, how you cannot exactly translate a lot of um, names or words that mean completely different things. In different contexts. And also, so the show is not really about floods. It's not really about little girls, but it also kind of is. So it's about a lot of things. We think it's a very poetic um, entry point to also think that um, these kids here, which I can tell you a story about them, they're from a, a theater group called uh, Gidri Bali, which is in the northwest of Bangladesh. Most of the people who live there are climate migrants, so they come from different religious and ethnic communities, but this group has been working with them over 20 years and through culture creating this extreme cohesion. Um, these kids, now the first girl has entered secondary school because these kids are basically being commissioned by museums, including the Madre, who's in here, um, to do projects to speak about, um, to speak about and to share um, their beliefs and their experiences with climate change, which also come from what they're living now, but also folk traditions. So they um, interpreted the curatorial theme, which I should say also the theme was developed with our art mediators as well, who have been working with us like over the past uh, five editions. So they were able to basically get a preview of what this was and opine and give an opinion. So they're very much in this. But you guys can watch a video on YouTube where these kids basically interpreted this into a play that's a video. And so for them, Bonna is this figure that brings chaos, but chaos can provide change and chaos can shake things up for a better future. And I don't know how much people in here know about this, but um, architecture in Bangladesh is really incredible in the sense that people know that climate change is coming and they're building for it. So incredible cyclone shelters, floating schools, movable houses. Um, it's a place where actually people should come to learn uh, rather than go to teach. Um, we're very excited about showing this uh, work by Roman Ondak. So when I talk about floods and little girls, um, we measure water lines and people uh, in the same way. Uh, and so this is a, a work, an old work by Roman Ondak. He hasn't shown it in a really long time, and I think it took me three editions to convince him to let us show this. Um, but it's a piece called Measuring the Universe, and it's measuring um, all of the visitors that come into the space. And since we are so densely visited in Dhaka, it will look completely different than other uh, iterations of this piece. Um, the art mediators have also been heavily involved in speaking to the artists. So as I mentioned, artists are making new work for the summit. So this is one, uh, one that's coming for 2023. It's by Ritika Merchant, uh, and it's called Trans Title. And so she was doing research about um, folk stories and traditions about uh, floods and rivers in Bangladesh. So you have mud skipper fish in here. Um, better for you to come see it and for her to tell you all the stories. I can't, it would take the whole time of this talk, but we're just kind of trying to give you a little bit of a preview of some of the thematics that will come together as you come to visit. We are very excited, this is a rendering, um, but this is, we also work a lot with architects, uh, not just with artists, because we don't like these silos of creativity. So this is a rendering of a pavilion by a South African architect of um, Indian diaspora named Sumaya Valley. And she's making a clay pavilion um, inspired by, I guess many cultures to, to be able to conjure rain is one of the ultimate powers and it exists in many, many cultures. And in South Africa it's women that are conjuring this power. Um, and so it's gonna be a pavilion which is made of a combination of fired and unfired pots. 
and women will come and wash the pots. And so over the course of nine days in the choreography, you will see um, the pavilion change with the, with the water and the earth interacting. Um, this is a, so basically as part of our ongoing journey of being self-reflexive, we used to try to cover these columns because we thought they were a problem and now artists and we work with them. So this, and we also try to give space for maybe emerging artists that haven't had a big uh, presentation before. So this is an emerging artist who is of Indian diaspora but grew up in Hawaii. So also bringing that uh, Pacific and Bengali uh, traditions together. And um, she's inspired by traditions of the Durga Puja, where basically trees are dressed as brides and are used to, people are marrying uh, nature, so it's looking at this intersection between um, humans and non-humans, but also using jute, which is a material that's extremely violent when it comes to colonial history, particularly in Bengal. Um, we don't want to only make work that talks about disaster and climate change, we actually want to do something to help it. Uh, so basically you might have heard that there were major floods in Silet this summer. So there's a, a great architect named Rizvi Hassan. Uh, he just won an Aga Khan Prize for Architecture and he's been working with flood impacted communities in Silet and we've been commissioning these um, woven mats that are called Shitalpati, but in a, in a contemporary way which he's going to be showing. Uh, there's going to be an architecture exhibition curated by Sean Anderson. Um, who was formerly um, at MoMA and now the head of undergraduate studies of architecture at Cornell. And the show is gonna be called To Enter the Sky and it's looking at the architecture of turbulence. Who also curated for us the show? Before, absolutely. So we also, we really um, welcome return uh, characters because we think that you grow with the deepening in the context. Mm -hmm. So if you had asked me in 2012 if I'd ever work with Anthony Gormley and Daka Artsum and I probably would not have uh, uh, thought that would happen, but actually Anthony and I did an interview and he uh, lived in India for I believe four years before he went to art school studying Vipassana yoga. So basically he was interested in discovering that space inside of him um, and when you know that you can see the practice in a, in a certain light. And he hasn't been back to the region since 1974 and um, he is experimenting with our teams. What you're seeing here is our daily WhatsApps of bamboo experiments. Um, so he's going to make a work with no carbon footprint, uh, experimenting with bamboo artisans that's gonna kind of take over this plaza and then be recycled into other materials. Uh, so it's, you're seeing something that's not formed yet, but it's more this kind of process of working with artists in experimental ways. And they can work this way in Dhaka in a way that they probably could not in other more, um, how do you say, uh, more formal contexts. Um, this is a work by a Belgian performance artist named Meet Warlop. Uh, it's called The Board. Her brother actually volunteered in, ba in Bangladesh when he was a teenager. Um, but it's a, a humorous work where basically these pants without heads walk around judging the artworks. Um, but we have a very um, interesting and first time collaboration with the Bangladesh uh, Garments Manufacturers Association. So this is basically the backbone of the country. These women who are working there have, you know, I don't know if you know this, but Bangladesh has the highest female purchasing power in South Asia. Um, women are a very strong workforce in the garment, you know, there are very bad yeah. parts of the garment the industry. The women, the women in the garments industry are the backbone of our society. So, and the economy, so the huge contribution. So this also work kind of references that the new um, work. So the she new work. So basically the, the, the story, the positive side of the garment story hasn't been told well yet. So Meet is going to be going to Dhaka with me in a few weeks and meeting with the BGMEA and actually the there's going to be a female version of this piece but also the factory workers will be involved in performing the piece yeah, as well. So the factory workers will be making the garment, they'll be performing in it and um, yeah because these women are the pants of the society. Um, and also of course being fairly compensated and all of that. Absolutely. Yes. Um, next, so this is another big experiment, but there's an Indian artist named Afra Shafiq and she's interested in something she calls the internet rather than the internet, but, um, and inspired by this form of Minecraft. So she's making a video game that's using this kind of a metaphor of a queen ant that uh, is very, um, how do you say, disillusioned with her colony. She leaves, she falls asleep, but when she wakes up, there's all these ants around her that she has to lead. Um, so this is um, very much at the beginning of an experiment, but I bring it up because it's a collaboration with Pivo in Brazil, Kunsali Zurich, FHNW in Basel, but also Garage in Moscow. And I bring that up because um, this predated the war. The curator is Ukrainian and gay and had to flee out of the country. And um, 
I think it's important to find ways this work will not show in Russia, it cannot show in Russia, but the kind of intellectual um, contributions are something we're trying to keep. Um, this is an artist that we're also very proud of named Joyda Ruaja. He is from, um, he is an indigenous artist from Bangladesh, part of the um, hill track community. And when we talk about floods under the Pakistani era, the flood, uh, there was a, um, a dam built and it flooded uh, even the castle of the king. So it's underwater. So imagine for people what that might feel like. And here in his imagination, his people are holding up the palace and they're finding hope out of the floods. Um, so we're, we're very excited to be showing this. Um, Simon Fujiwara uh, is a, um, an artist based in Berlin uh, who has um, created this incredible character, which I guess many of you could have seen at the Pari Plus, um, named Who the Bear. Uh, and Who the Bear finds himself in many historical and art historical um, conventions and conversations. But he's going to come to Dhaka for the first time. And this is a good entry point to talk about a show that we're commissioning with the Kiran Nader Museum of Art in New Delhi. Um, so who has very serious things to say to adults, uh, even though he looks like someone childish? And we found that, um, for example, in the slavery show at the Rijks Academy, traces of um, Dutch slavery in Bangladesh are found in nursery rhymes uh, that kids are talking about, uh, that, that kids say in Bangladesh. There's a lot of um, adult material hidden in kids' stuff, and actually the things we say to kids form adults. So we want to look, or the show will be looking critically at, yeah, how, how we um, connect with our inner child uh, and how we maybe think about other ways to um, I guess to transfer knowledge and to you know build a, a better society. But what's interesting, so for us, the show will be on for nine days. In Delhi, it will be on for three months, and it will develop over the course of the collaboration with book publishing talks, um, commissions. But we're very excited that Simon is going to be uh, contributing to this and bringing Who to South Asia for the first time. Um, Matt Copson, I mean, I, I'll go a bit quicker, but he's a, a British artist and he has this piece, um, I think this one's called The Age of Coming, and you have a child and he has a storm inside of him and he's storming. And it's also incredible when you think about these metaphors. Bona is a girl that is named after a weather pattern. Normally weather patterns are named after girls. And actually someone in here's child asked me why, why it had to be a girl. So we're also trying to look at these, um, how do you say, relationships between gender, climate change, and how we relate with weather. Um, so on that note, like this is um, a work by a Bangladeshi modern artist named Shafuddin Ahmed. It's called The Cry. And you can see these eyes that are kind of moving around like storms. Um, and Cecilia Bengalea just left, but I was working with her on a text. And one of the lines was that storms have eyes and eyes have storms. And we're trying to look at these connections in poetic ways with artists. Um, Marina Perez Simao is an incredible Brazilian artist, um, and she's interested in what could liquid look like in other universes. Um, so she's kind of making a new body of work of looking at, you know, hypothetical storms in outer space. Um, Aisha Sultana, maybe Nadia, you can say, say a bit about our relationship with Aisha Sultana. Yeah, Aisha Sultana was. Um, one of, in 2014, we, um, every edition we have this award, Samdani Art Award, and it's an open call. All young artists can apply for this. And then, so, and then, of course, it's shortlisted and there's a beautiful curated show. So in 2014, um, Aisha Sultana won the Samdani Art Award. And um, since then, I mean, she's just, um, I think one of the, uh, one of the very, um, incredible success stories of the Dhaka Art Summit is Aisha Sultana. She's everywhere now. There's a big wait list and she's just producing the most beautiful, sensitive works. Yeah, and before, like, had just didn't have an audience. So we'll have new work by Aisha, but I also love these new aluminum sculptures that she created, which almost look like water is seeping through the room. The show won't be this literal about floods, but this is these are the projects that have kind of emerged. We have 120 artists in the show, most of them from Bangladesh, most of them from South Asia. Um, so a lot, a lot ahead. Um, so I'll close with this one where... Um, I guess as a curator, I really love to think with artists, but over long periods of time. So many of you, I, art people that go to art fairs might know the work of Lucas Aruda, but you probably haven't seen a work like this. It doesn't uh, reproduce well here, but it's it's his first work with the cyclone. So he's going to be doing a series of um, 
paintings that are looking at cyclones, but the first time you'll be able to see them is in Bangladesh. So I guess with all of that, um, the point of all of this is we would love to welcome you there. It's also something where we love it for people to make their own relationships with Bangladeshi artists to continue this over time. You guys are all of our visitors, like from the local public to curators to collectors to writers are all so much a part of building this art scene in Bangladesh. Um, and people have a lot to say, and um, it's very meaningful to us that you're here to listen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, yeah. see you on Dhaka. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions, we're also very happy to answer them. Critical questions, uh, general questions of travel, anything. Like, we're, we're here to answer them. <laughs> Yes, Catherine has a question. And Catherine yeah. is um, someone who is, is a dear friend of the Dhaka Art Summit and has come to Bangladesh many times and is the director of Madre at the moment. So in Bangladesh, most artists work collectively as well as individually. So they're actually building institutions to allow them to support the way they make work. So anyone who went to Documenta would have seen the work of the Brito Arts Trust, which is one of the oldest and most established um, collectives in Bangladesh. Um, but we found that through the summit, um, so certain collectives were getting lots of mobility, but that's because they spoke English and they had a website. There are a lot of initiatives doing incredible work, including the Gidri Bali with the puppet theater, that don't have the time to market and don't speak art world language. And so we actually spent about a year mapping out what are the f forms of collective practice and socially engaged practice in Bangladesh, um, and kind of created a resource so that people who wanted to learn about them could, um, through write-ups, interviews, conferences, and then we gave seed funding to each of these organizations to do a project and also allowed them to share knowledge and brought in other people to, um, yeah, to ca like Catherine to come and to discover what they were doing and to also share knowledge. So for us, socially engaged practice and collective practice is very much a part of the kind of work that's being made in Bangladesh. It's not this, there are examples like Aisha Sultana of this kind of individual for lack of a better word, genius, which is a problematic word, but she's also working in a collective uh, manner and that type of work is as important, if not more important than the individual practice. Um, next summit, I think it'll be there, but not in, not in the same sort of way, but we're opening our space in Silet, and so that's a place where we really want to kind of bring this back and also, it was really a pleasure to collaborate with a field, I think Gregory's here, but which is also a network of socially engaged practices from around the world. But how can we network these initiatives with other initiatives working uh, on similar issues, but in other contexts and perhaps carrying other skill sets that could be applied? You, you can... <laughs> I guess that's missing from this presentation, but we work a lot with art historians and also kind of pull together think tanks where we bring researchers from Africa, South and Southeast Asia together um, to basically share knowledges um, and also have talks. But this edition, we feel that in a world of so many Zoom seminars where like people are uh, 
there are other forums for that. And if you're going to be spending time in Bangladesh, we really want to take you into Dhaka and to see what people are doing and to meet people. And, and there's other forums for those discussions. When uh, SLED is open, this will become a hub for this kind of research and meetings again. But uh, Sharjah is opening on the 7th of February. So if you arrive in Dhaka on the 3rd, you can go to Sharjah after. And they will have a very, very rich um, symposium that weekend. There's also the Kochi Biennial happening at the same time, the India Art Fair. So it's really a good time to kind of go around and see that, but we feel like the role of this summit is more, we want to listen to nursery rhymes, we want to look at folk tales. These kids are making a play, they're traveling to Kulna, where the Sundarbans are, um, to basically co-produce uh, a theater play that's looking at what fair transition means. So for example, if we all cut our carbon consumption right now, the people that would be hurt the most are the parents of these kids, and that's a story that's not told enough. So we feel like, if we're all going to be traveling and talking about climate change, we want you to meet and to spend time with these children because that's who is actually going to be living the, um, the consequences of our choices and who are going to be building the future. Yes, Marianne. Sorry, what? To to us, our team, yes, of course, we're always open. Like we, we receive um, <laughs> we receive uh, ideas and projects all the time, and sometimes they're um, yeah, no, they're th we, we 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 like we like that sort of feedback, <laughs> and I think that's also something that that I find very um, how do you say um, liberating in Dhaka? Like while we while I might not have like HD projectors that we can rent or all this kind of general stuff. Um, we have an appetite to do things and we can also, we don't have this kind of long approval process um, and it's really like a can-do attitude, like how can, there is a moment where we'll say we cannot do this, but we try <laughs> for as long as possible yeah, to. Yeah. Try, um, <laughs> yeah, the max. Yeah, but it's also gonna be bothering all of you because it's so many favors and, uh, and how do you say, it's, it's a really, uh, one day I wanna make a book about the summit where we're looking at like who hand carried something from somewhere else, who, um, you know, who helped with the visa, who like Eric Sinier, who traveled the show from Dhaka to their space, who, um, I mean, there's, there's so many examples. So it's really, I think, a special platform of what like sharing resources can be and maybe to close something that came up in the uh, field um, meeting in Castle was this idea of surplus, right? Some people have surplus of ideas, some people have surpluses of resources, some people have surpluses of time, but how do we circulate that? And I think the summit is a really great example. Yeah, yeah and Dakar Summit is a collaboration of everybody. I mean, of course we organize it, but it happens through everybody's support. The artists, the curators, visitors, supporters, everybody. Yeah. And maybe like once I was sitting at a, a dinner and someone told me that they thought I, that they heard I worked in the worst place in the world. And luckily other people at the dinner had been there and were like, are you out of your mind? So it's also, I think, really important to, um, you know, in a world of closed minds, like it's great that you're all in here to listen. Like how can we try to make the world more open and to be open to learning to other ways of living, especially in a place like Bangladesh that is coming up with incredible solutions for, you know, we're all gonna be facing more floods. Yeah. Great, thank you so much.